Hey, Paul Stanley. Hey, Paul, how's it going there? Very well, thank you. I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. And I want to first ask you about art and then some music questions, if you don't mind. Sure, of course. Okay, so I've read that you really, really got back into art about 10 years ago. But I want to know if there was a specific teacher or person that inspired you to get into painting in the first place. Not really. I have to say, um, I certainly don't want to set myself up as a role model for anyone. Um, I had no teachers and I, I felt strongly that for me to be at my best creating the less people involved in the process would give the best result. So, um, I'm, I much prefer learning by trial and error than guidance. Um, perhaps if somebody can give me a quick tip, fine, but uh, I'm, I'm not someone who, who um, gets the most out of instruction. Um, and for me, art has always been very much like music in the sense that I believe that when I please myself, that I will please the most people because I'm not, you know, I, I, I'm fair, fairly uh, um, similar to the general population. So for me, it's always a matter of uh, staying true to myself and the rest will follow, whether it was uh, with the band or with art, it's always been done to satisfy a, a need and a, a void in myself. Do you have to be in a certain mood to paint or are you able to, you know, bring a painting set up on the road when you're touring with your music? Um, I did that once, interestingly enough, uh, in Australia, I suddenly had the, the urge to paint and, uh, I, I went out and bought a, a whole second set of supplies, including an easel, and, and went to work. Um, at this point, I'm so immersed in art that it really is a five-day-a-week um, large part of my day. I'm, I'm actually uh, uh, at my... my studio to, to work right now. And when you say studio, so do you rent a space or do you also have a home set up? Well, I had a, a art studio in my house, in my guest house, um, that I subsequently uh, converted to rehearsal space for Soul Station, for my uh, Motown Philly band. So I set up at the Kiss warehouse we have a huge warehouse and uh since i'm paying for it anyway i might as well make the maximum use of it so uh i have great space here and and uh it it's uh really my my uh go-to literally every morning i'm i'm, I'm here at nine o'clock so in a way has painting overtaken music as your main passion I think there's room in life to go through periods of, of focusing on one aspect more than another. And it doesn't mean that it's, it can't be fluid. So right now, beyond a, a doubt, my, my focus is art. And yet this summer in uh, the second week in July, uh, first and second week in July, we're headlining massive festivals in Spain and Portugal. So I like to I like to focus my attention on whatever I'm doing. I, I'm I don't believe in in doing things half ass. I like to do it whole ass. <laughs> sure. 
And you, for someone that follows you on social media, besides painting, mm. besides music, they also see that you like to cook, which I assume is another creative outlet for you. So, you know, that leads me to believe that you always want to be creating something. Do you find that to be the case? Very much so. I believe that we can, and I certainly do, define myself by the challenges I take on and uh, how I respond to them and, and, and you know, um, how, how it manifests itself. So I, I find new pieces to this puzzle every time I try something new. So whether it's theater or art or cooking um, or experiencing being a parent, whatever it is in life or a husband, those are for me, the, the way that I, I define myself for myself. Sure. Now, when you finish a painting, do you feel relief or are you the kind of person that looks at it and goes, man, I could have done that a little differently? Well, if I were to say, man, I could have done that a little differently. What I should be saying is, man, next time I'm going to do it a little differently. I am. Every step you take gets you to the next step. I mean, I don't want to sound like Yoda, but um, life is, a, is an ongoing journey. So um, you can't get to the second chapter without reading the first. It, it wouldn't, wouldn't make sense. So um, I, I spend a lot of time thinking about the creative process of what I want to do next and how I'm going to do it. Um, but it's always built on what I, what preceded it. So um, without, without step one, you can't do step two. So I, I don't find myself, uh, I don't, I don't uh, ruminate or, or, or um, fixate on on the the negative of anything right yeah you are widely known to be a positivity oriented person so that makes a lot of sense and i'm curious though with all of the paintings do you have any plans to do a book or something where the everyday person might be able to take home different prints well sure um every piece that's done is photographed with a, a book in mind um Honestly, the, the first day I painted, I never imagined doing multiple paintings. And then I certainly never imagined showing them anywhere. And I certainly never imagined filling a gallery. And I never imagined the kind of uh, uh, um, the, the amount of, of collectors who would be acquiring my art and the amount of people additionally who perhaps know nothing about art and mind you don't need to because uh when you're exposed to something your reaction should either be positive or negative and and if it's positive you don't owe anybody an explanation for why you like something it's purely enough that you do opinions don't have to be as certainly opinions for or the arts don't have to be educated. They just, they're validated because they're yours. Will the art at all f factor into the upcoming Kiss Cruise? Will you be having your paintings on display or anything to that effect? Um, I've done that uh, in on past Kiss Cruises. Uh, last year, we had a, a gallery set up and uh, it was... Uh, received beyond all expectations exceeded any of any of my my uh limited expectations i i i did it more to see what would happen and <clears throat> it was phenomenal so yes we there will be a gallery set up on the ship 
And for somebody that's thinking of coming to one of your upcoming gallery showings, like the one in Short Hills, New Jersey, uh, what's to be expected? I, I assume you'll be in attendance, right? I am there. It's virtually impossible and not productive for anyone, uh, including uh, both myself and the, the visitors. It's not to anybody's advantage for me to be walking around on the floor. That, that's more of a distraction. I certainly make sure that I get a chance to say hello but because of the size of the crowds, we tend to let people in in groups. And if they see something that they want to take home, they will spend time with me. But in terms of one-on-one -on -one time, it's virtually impossible uh, unless somebody is, is uh, acquiring a piece. Got it. Beyond these upcoming art shows beyond the kiss cruise is there something that you're promoting at the moment or is that really the focus of now right now my, my uh i can't say that i'm promoting anything other people are, are promoting things and i'm i uh become a, a participant but uh rock and brews uh our restaurant chain is uh We'll have 30 restaurants by the end of this year um, and is going in international. And, and we expect in the next three years to be well above 50. And so Rock and Brews is, is uh, one of my focuses because uh, it's, it's become enormously successful, mainly based on the same principle that if you fulfill a need of your own, you f you fill a need of someone else. So to have a great restaurant with terrific quality food where you can bring your, your children during the day and not have to eat cardboard macaroni and cheese, uh, and you can bring your pets, and uh, you can certainly sample and have one of 80 to 100 craft beers you really get the idea. It's, it's a, a, a terrific, uh, terrific establishment. So between that and, uh, art, which, uh, I think I have four shows coming up in the next, uh, three or four months. Um, and kiss shows and the kiss cruise. That's about all I need on my plate. Quite honestly, I'm, I'm, I have four kids who in, in one degree or another take up uh, a large part of my time as they should and as I, as I want. Anybody can be a parent. Being a good parent is, is something that, that you, you commit yourself to. And earlier you had mentioned Soul Station uh, within the context of the practice space. Are, yeah. Is there any upcoming Soul Station uh, activity planned for? We're working on putting together a TV special that would, would air and uh, recording. We'd love to be in the studio and uh, take it to, to the next level. It's such an amazing band and it's so valid in terms of playing these classic Motown and Philly songs the way they originally were played and playing them with respect and reverence. Um, it's, it's just a phenomenal, a phenomenal show and a phenomenal evening when, when you have a band made up of a who's who of people who have played with everyone from Smokey Robinson to Stevie Wonder, Natalie Cole, um, the Temptations, John Mayer, Christine Aguilera. When you have a, a group of people who have this feeling of a crusade to pay homage to a music that unfortunately seems to be relegated at this point to being samples on a rap song, um, there's so much great music to be played and, and 
between uh, this massive band that we have. It's it's uh, it's pure joy. Well, beyond the soul genre, uh, you've shown prowess within country. You know, specifically Hard Luck Woman. You show that you could write a country rock song if you want to. Did you ever think of trying to get into the Nashville realm as a writer for other artists? I, uh, you know, it's it's a very I don't want to say closed off, but it's a very uh, community um, community uh, based music, and um, they're they tend to be quite self contained and understandably so. So um, there's a, enough things out there for me that I don't need permission to do in the sense that I don't need someone to open the door for me. So I, I, I tend to do the things where, where I make the choices. Right. Now, another uh, end of that spectrum. I remember 10, 12 years, something like that, you had co-written a song for the band The Click Five. At the time, was the plan to do a lot of writing for other artists? I'm always open to <clears throat> to writing if somebody comes and it seems like fun for me. It's not a uh, it's not a, a monumental undertaking, so it, it, it's not something that uh, I have to prepare for. It's it's pretty spur of the moment. If if something were to come along and it made sense, um, I wrote and. Uh, co-produced a huge hit song in Japan for a group called, uh, well, they're, they're actually called Momiro Rovers. So I heard their music and I was asked and I thought, sure, I can, I can do that. And I did. Very much in the same way that when I heard Rod Stewart, when I heard Mandolin Wind and Maggie May and those songs, I went, I'll bet I can do that. And I wrote Hard Luck Woman. When dance music was at its initial peak, original peak, um, I was at Studio 54 and I listened to a bunch of songs and I went, I can do that. And I wrote, I was made for loving you. So... um, it doesn't take a lot of preparation. It's just, instead of preparation, I like to go on inspiration. Now, where does all this positivity come from, you think? Because from reading your book and hearing interviews with you over the years, you did not have an easy childhood, yet you never stopped working hard. So the work ethic has always been there, of course. Right. Um, the positivity comes from from results. The, the more the more positive results you have from your positivity, the more positive you become. It's, it's affirming. It's affirming of your belief system when you find out you're right. So if there's a naysayer or someone out there who goes, you know, that would say my philosophy is corny. Well, it got me here. And not only did it get me here in terms of, business success it's made for a life for me that's far beyond anything i ever contemplated or or knew existed and it's all based on positivity it's all based uh, upon a positive outlet look which doesn't mean that things are easy it means that hard work can pay off and the only way to find out how important something is to you is to find out how hard you're willing to work to achieve it. And then another thing that's come up a lot lately on your social media is a trip to New York where you're able to show um, one of your children where you live. And do you still identify as a New Yorker? Because I know for decades you've been primarily California based. Well, I identify as a New Yorker in the sense that my, my roots and my formative years, certainly my early formative years are in New York. I drove a cab in New York. So am I a New Yorker? 
well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't exist without New York. I wouldn't be who I am without New York. Um, no matter where I live, that was my springboard and that was, uh, formative years for me. So to be able to take my children to the building I grew up in, which was a one bedroom apartment where my parents slept on a fold out sofa. And for us to get to the kitchen, if they were sleeping, we had to crawl under the sofa for me to be able to share that with my kids is, uh, a blessing for, for all of us, for me to be able to go back and revisit my past. And for me also to be able to, uh, show my children the difference in where we live and how we live versus where I lived and how I lived. And having done Broadway in Canada, is Broadway in New York something that's still on your to-do list? You know, there's only so much time. And that, that the, the other thing for me has always been that if you're going to do something, you owe it to yourself and, and ultimately others to do it properly. When I did Phantom, I had to go to New York and audition and get signed off and, and, uh, and, uh, went up to Canada where the show was, uh, had been running 10 years and it was, uh, daunting, but it was something that I knew I could do if I was willing to do the work. So that being said, it turned out amazingly well eight shows a week, standing ovations. Um, when I finished Phantom, I was offered to go to Broadway to do a different musical. And I just didn't think it was worth the amount of effort I would have to put in to do it the way I would want to. In other words, to get involved in something that doesn't meet your standards or requirements takes just as much time. You don't, you don't skimp based upon how you feel about something. If you commit to something, you give it a hundred percent. And I found myself not, not wanting to commit that amount of time. So, um, on this last trip to New York, certainly going to Phantom and, uh, having, the cast and, and production people uh, push for me to, to do it is an amazing, amazing and wonderful feeling. Uh, I don't know if and when I could, but uh, the experience of live theater is staggering. It's, uh, it's unlike anything else. Um, in that it's certainly unlike film because in film you shoot a scene 50 times, someone chooses which take they're going to use and then they edit it. So you have no immediate connection and the finished product is only part you. Whereas when you do live theater, you're virtually on a tightrope without a net. And if you make it across, you get, um, appropriately rewarded by the audience. So that's, that's something that, uh, is certainly a, a, a draw for me, you know, in, in terms of wanting to do it, but I'm also aware that there's so many hours and uh, there's so many hours in the day and so many years in your life. Right. When I had the pleasure of interviewing Gene a few months ago, he'd mentioned that a kiss Broadway musical was something being discussed. Has there been any progress on that end in recent months? It's been discussed literally for decades. Um, certainly now is a, a more appropriate time, but from my point of view, you only get one chance to do something right. And although there have been numerous offers I'm not, I would rather do nothing than do something that I will regret. 
so um, there's been some initial great starts that turned out to to come to a halt. And as of now, uh, there's nothing planned, although that could change on, on a day's notice. Hmm. So that's interesting that you wouldn't be disappointed if it didn't happen. But is there anything that you still really hope does happen for, for the KISS legacy? No, because it's all happening, and it all has happened. Um, I, I see what we've, the, the indelible giant footprint, boot print, actually, that we've made. And uh, KISS DNA is in every live band show out there. So we've also raised the standard of what audiences expect and will tolerate from, from performers. So that's, that's incredibly rewarding. And, and to have other bands and musicians say that, you know, gee, without you, there'd be no me is, is great. I, I think that that's validation to a point that says that this band should continue with or without me, it's uh, when something, when a band or, or anything, a team lasts 40 years, 50 years, the only way for it continue, can continue is for it to evolve. And that means in terms of personnel, otherwise it's impossible. Um, there are bands touring at this point with one or no original members. And I have no problem with that because it didn't happen overnight. It was a series of changes over years and decades. So if someone were to say, well, there's no original members in, in, you know, in, in one of the versions of yes, I'd say, who cares? It sounds like yes. And the pedigree is yes. So is it yes? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. So uh, in closing, any last words for the kids? For the kids? For the kids. Who are the kids? The kids are whoever uh, you think might be reading this. Long story short, it's my signature closing question. Um, growing older doesn't mean you have to grow up. Wow. That's poignant there. <laughs> Thank you. I really, really want to thank you for your time. Kiss is one of my favorite bands. My wife and I played Kiss Mini Golf after we got married, etc. So really, thank you for uh, all the years of great music. Thank you Paul. so much. Appreciate it. Keep up the great work and hope to see a, a Soul Station show in New York soon. Me too. Outro. <laughs>